just because Tesla, that's all we talk about. But uh, that's the hook of this story mm -hmm. is that GM beat Tesla. Cadillac was, uh, at this point, was uh, had a better system than Tesla. Yeah, Cadillac is a better system than Tesla. Hey, I'm Steven, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So we've just heard that according to Consumer Reports, Tesla does not have the best driver assistance feature currently available in the marketplace. This is a rather surprising finding, so in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions on the Consumer Reports findings and their methodology. So, let's get into the video. But first, don't forget if you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Sign up, open a new account, deposit $100, you'll get three free stocks. Two of them value between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using a link in the description. Let's get back to it. Kind of like the Wild West out there, right? So everyone's talking about self-driving cars and fully autonomous vehicles. Well, they're not here at all. But there are these autonomous, well, they're automated driving somewhat vehicles. And they're all over the place. So we looked at the ones that are out in the market right now, and some well, I mean, they almost try to do too much, but they really aren't that capable of what they're doing. So in the worst situation, you're in these vehicles and they're driving along and they steer the wheel for you, but they're not that capable. And sometimes there's a situation where you could almost overtrust them and really get distracted. The best systems out there, and maybe the biggest surprise, it's not Tesla, which is in the news a lot, it's actually Cadillac which actually has a lot of capability, but also has good safeguards that tries to keep you safe. It actually has a camera that looks at the driver's eyes, making sure that they're looking at the road ahead of them. That really is a game changer, and we're hoping to see a lot more of that going forward. Okay, so this would be a great time to actually try to understand the Consumer Reports methodology. It sounds to me, just based on first impressions, that they don't actually care about how functional the driver assistance technology is. They care about how functional is it, plus how safe does it keep you, plus how much does it baby the driver, plus how many training wheels are attached to the vehicle you're using while you're able to engage this system. So here we are on the Consumer Reports website. I'm just gonna read about the methodology. Consumer Reports testers looked at the way each of the 17 systems performed in five specific categories. Capability and performance, which understandably is probably the most important thing to be measuring, just in my opinion. Keeping the driver engaged, ease of use, clear when safe to use, and unresponsive driver. So we can see here that Consumer Reports isn't just rating the capability of the system to do what it's trying to do to assist the driver. They're also factoring in things like how well the system keeps the driver engaged, how easy it is to use, how clear it is, and how safe, and what happens when there's an unresponsive driver. Interesting that, uh, and it, you know, this is, just because Tesla, that's all we talk about, but uh, that's the hook of this story mm -hmm. is that GM beat Tesla, Cadillac was, uh, at this point was, uh, had a better system than Tesla. Yeah, Cadillac is a better system than Tesla. I mean, in terms of absolute capability of, in terms of how the ability to steer within the lane and, and do speed control, which is really the primary task of these, these um, Tesla is very good too. But the problem with Tesla is it allows you to use it in situations, well, honestly, you shouldn't be using it. Uh, roads that aren't controlled, roads that might have pedestrians or stopped vehicles. Oh, I see. So the problem with Tesla software is that they don't treat you like an infant. They instead treat you like a responsible adult who can read and follow the instructions. You know, like you must monitor the system the entire time and be ready to take over at any moment. Oh, no, 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 no. Tesla's no good because they don't coddle you and treat you like a moron. You know, here's an analogy. Imagine Consumer Reports was comparing the capability of the internet for finding information versus going down to your local library. Consumer Reports would happily acknowledge, sure, there's a lot more information available on the internet, it's more convenient, more functional, okay, but here's the thing. On the internet, you can look up how to make a bomb if you want to, whereas in the library, the librarian's gonna say, mate, you're asking too many questions, sorry, you're not allowed to do that, no bombs for you. This is the argument I think that Consumer Reports is putting forward. Tesla may have the superior technology, but they don't make it safe enough for the misuse cases. So therefore, GM Super Cruise is better overall. Now, I personally disagree vehemently with this methodology, but each to their own. The problem that I really have with this 
is this stuff makes headlines. And most people, including the Muppets who've been DMing me for the last day, go, oh my God, did you hear about this? What's your opinion? Haven't actually even looked at the methodology that's been used. They've just read a headline and thought, oh no, I don't understand. And they don't really do a very good job of making sure that you're actually continuing to watch the road ahead Jake, of you. Just, just explain uh, the one thing that I don't understand about this is, is on roads that you shouldn't be using autopilot on, does the Cadillac version of it stop you from doing that? Like, and how does it do yeah. that? Well, it, it's actually pretty clever. So what, what General Motors has done is they've actually mapped all the roads across the country that, that, that it's able to operate on in a safer way. So it's divided highways. They've actually done a very high definition LIDAR mapping of these roads. Also known as high definition training wheels. Um, and those are the ones that it operates on. If you're on a road that it's not as confident with, it's going to lock you out. It's going to give you a message and tell you that it can't be operated in that situation. Sir, you are officially banned from the internet. Apparently there's some dangerous information there. We're scared that you might have been able to access some of that. So therefore, no internet for you. Go visit the library. It's much safer. Therefore, according to our wonderful methodology, the library is a much better source of information than the internet, obviously. Now let's publish some headlines all throughout the mainstream media so that people can understand how much better libraries are than the internet for gaining information. I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from here. The fact that Consumer Reports have used a methodology that puts Tesla below first place in terms of the driver assistance features, it's kind of embarrassing. Now, I'm not here to judge the methodology, but the headlines that it produces are questionable. And this is where I take a little bit of issue with Consumer Reports. So here we're actually looking at how Tesla performed in the different categories according to Consumer Reports. First off the bat, capabilities and performance, Tesla Autopilot wins out with a 9 out of 10. In my opinion, capabilities and performance should heavily weight the results because this kind of is the important thing. How capable is it and how well does it perform? Crazy, I know. If we look through the other criteria, ease of use, Tesla also comes in the number one spot, but then things go downhill. What happens in the case of an unresponsive driver? Well, apparently Tesla sucks shit and Cadillac Super Cruise wins by a mile. What about clarity around when it's safe to use? Well, fancy that, Tesla near the bottom of the pile with a 2 out of 10, Cadillac Super Cruise, 8 out of 10. And finally, keeping the driver engaged, Cadillac Super Cruise, once again coming out in first place, Tesla buried near the bottom of the list. How unfortunate. Questionable methodology in my opinion, but whatever. The thing that I actually take issue with isn't the ratings, or the categories, or the criteria. The thing that I take issue with is the accompanying headline. I quote, Cadillac Super Cruise outperforms other driving assistance systems. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but I kind of have the impression that the term perform refers to performing the task in question, as in assisting the driver, not monitoring the driver, not explaining to the driver if it's a good time to be using the system, but how it performs. Anyway, a little bit of a side. How about the subline? Other automakers close in on Tesla's autopilot, now a distant second, in Consumer Reports' new ratings of 17 systems. So again, that sort of subtitle there seems to imply that Tesla's autopilot, in terms of its performance as a driving assistance system, is a distant second now to Super Cruise. This, I personally believe, is rather misleading and causes rather misleading headlines and discussion in the wider media, which is exactly what we've seen since the publication of this report. Uh, on the other hand, you have Tesla, which you could be honestly on a curvy back road with just one lane that's that's not even that well defined. It'll engage, but it'll operate erratically. Hey, Jake, let me, let me ask you this. My concern was this was not that you know, GM came out that much better than Tesla on this. My concern is all the issues you just brought up with Tesla, all the safety concerns, and Tesla's still number two on this list. This was not a one and two race. There were a lot of other names that came in below that. Yeah, well, if you look at Tesla, I mean, it's still very capable in what it does. So, like, if you no, operate it in... My point more broadly it, being there's going to be a whole lot of self-driving automobiles out there that just aren't safe. Volvo's dead last. Well, so, so so first of all, none of these are self-driving, and when you look at some uh, of the other ones that we looked misused. at, we looked at Volvo. You, you, right, I mean, all these these could be misused. So if you look at Tesla, if you look at Nissan, if you look at uh, Volvo, their capability isn't even there either. So it's almost at the primary task; it almost doesn't really give you much of a use at all. I would suspect most of the people who are driving these vehicles wouldn't even operate it because it doesn't even give you the convenience. Now you look at Tesla. 
Um, you look at some of these other ones, they do give you a convenience. For instance, if you are in stop and go traffic on a highway, they actually work very well and it's a nice convenience feature, not a safety feature, but at least it gives you some something for, yeah. for, for the system. So I hope this video has clarified a few things, especially for the people out there who would rather outsource their thinking and read a headline and make a decision just based on that. As I mentioned previously, consumer reports are welcome to use any methodology whatsoever. I personally wouldn't take the same approach, but where I do have an issue isn't so much with the methodology, but with the headlines, because as we know, most people are too lazy to do anything more than read a few words and then make a decision because thinking hurts. Something to think about, even if it's a little painful. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Don't forget, if you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Sign up, open a new account, deposit $100, you'll get three free stocks. Two of them value between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake, also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q and A's, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.